The private equity industry reportedly began the year 2020 with a record amount of cash, but it's not always easy to try and find ways to invest all that cash. Joining us right now with his take on the private equity environment is Bain Capital's co-chairman, Steve Paliuka. And it's great to see you, Steve. Thanks great for joining to be here, us today. Thanks. Um, because of how we introduced this, just with the amount of cash that's out there, how hard it has been to find deals, we'll go ahead and start with that. Um, what, what do you see right now? Are there opportunities for buying? What do you think of the prices you're seeing? Well, markets are an all-time high, I think, globally, yeah. cyclically and globally. So it's very hard to find good investments. Um, what the good private equity firms have done, and certainly our, our heritage is from the consulting business, where we really go in and, and, and add value and transform businesses, you have to find a business that you can grow and transform. Take a small company and, and, and take it global. Buy two companies at once, uh, because there will not be much multiple expansion left out there. So you really have to have a plan and a strategy. And I've been doing this for about 30 years, and we started out with that value-added focus. Then most of private equity has added that now. And then we've gone even deeper with vertical markets groups, and now we've even created uh, digital marketing people that go into our companies and, and, and get them on the Internet and, and really improve their marketing. So, so the industry from, I don't know, five or six firms in, in the 1980s, now 4,000 companies, the, the, the big ones have the resources to really drive growth. And, 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 and there's a misnomer out there with all the politics Private equity is not about cost cutting. It's about growth. Mm -hmm. No one wants to buy a company that is shrinking. And so we spend all of our time thinking, how, how do we grow companies? How do we do more R&D? How do we invest in new products? Um, you know, for example, uh, in trying to find these deals, we, we've done a deal where we're putting $350 million into a, a company that has, has bought 13 central nervous system drugs from Pfizer. Right. And we're going to commercialize those drugs. We're going to put them through the trials and commercialize them. That's great capital. That's growth. And, and that's what you need to do in private equity. We're building a brand new cruise line, Virgin Cruise Lines, with Richard Branson, investing $3 billion behind that. Mm. Um, so, so, so private equity's, I think, gotten a, a bad rap out there politically, but it's actually a big part of the economy. It's been a big success. Um, employs 9 million people. And, uh, and, and then the other misnomer is about this growth. If we look at our, our own Bain Capital portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, we've increased jobs by a million one since we, since we, since we bought the companies. That, that's a fact. I think it's got a bad rap now. Wait till your senator gets in. Well, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can get the news out there that, uh, that, that, that actually private equity has been a great thing for America. And a great Heather, thing it feels world. like the private equity industry is on the offensive right now. Is that because of sort of a worry that this, this election is, is coming and, and the industry is going to become a target if it hasn't already? I think it more reflects the maturation of the private equity industry. Their companies are big enough now to try to get the message out. And there has been so many false messages. But, well, you seem to you were sensitive and defensive, but you brought this up. You're like you're you're trying to counter something that you see out there that that you feel that it's. I mean, you mean? Well, I feel. I feel. I feel we didn't say that. God, all you yeah, got to yeah, do is I'm, cut costs. I feel like you know, I feel like I'm very I'm very proud of what the industry yeah. has done and what I do, and uh, and certainly you see a lot of negative advertising out you there, do. funded yeah. by different politicians and. And I think it's time to set the record straight. And I'm not being defensive about it. I, I just no. I think it's you're been, it's look, been, preaching to the choir. It's been a great thing. I, yeah. I hear it yeah. all too. But it, it's a these are interesting political. And you interview you interviewed Robert Smith. He gave millions to charity to yeah. put kids through school. Uh, if, if I look at my partners at Bank Capital, uh, they're giving out millions to charities. They're 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 they're, they're chairing charities. Uh, private equity has been extremely philanthropic as as an industry. Uh, let's talk about one of the companies that you have or you're going in and trying to put some additional growth into, and that's uh, Canada Goose. You're wearing the jacket right now. It's a company that you guys took public back in 2017. You stole a stake in it, though. What do you want to see happen? Uh, well, it's been a great story. My partners, Josh Beckenstein and Ryan Cotton, worked with the founder, uh, Danny Reese, and the founder is, is still there driving the business and has a big ownership percentage in the business. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it, was, it was a wonderful situation. He wanted to grow the business. He, he, he looked around for private equity firms. He thought our retail group had, had done so many deals and taken companies global and, and opened up stores. He partnered with, with, with us, and he's done a fabulous job. It's, it's, if you, I don't know if you've gone to the stores recently, but started out just with these jackets. Right. Um, I started wearing it, I think, seven years ago at, 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 at Davos. I was wearing it even before you, <laughs> eight years ago. It's and very uh, puffy, though, so I've changed. Coat. Oh, well, they, puffy Seinfeld coat. <laughs> yes. They they slimmed it down. I, I didn't wear. I, I wore the, the. This is the new black label. Horse. Kind of slim down one. Slim down. Although fashionable. I need to slim down myself a little bit in there in there too. But but uh, <laughs> they, they when we looked at the business with Danny, we said this is an incredible product. They had developed it 25, 30 years ago for Canadian expeditions to the Arctic. So mm -hmm. it was a family business, and we wanted to introduce that product to the rest of the world. So now it's gone global. It's gone from like a three hundred million dollar company to a three billion dollar company. Right. And it has a wide product line. When you go in the stores today, fantastic sweaters, 
And what we found is millennials in today's market, they want something that's going to last. They want something that's functional. And so Canada Goose has, has built beautiful, lasting products that are functional, and they're selling like hotcakes. The stock was down recently after a DA Davidson analyst said that he, he thought they were discounting some of the coats over the holidays. I think the company has denied that, but can you tell us anything on that? Uh, I have not personally seen any discounting. Uh, we, we have to pay full retail for the... For the jackets, so. not cheap. It's a pretty pricey, pricey coat. It is, but you know, you think about it. His, his, he's had his for eight years. These jackets yeah. will last twenty or thirty years. So it's in Europe. The, you know, they they start out in Europe a long time ago, buying things that are sustainable that they wear for for, for a long period of time. I think this is. Do in, you want? But but isn't that a isn't that a problem for the business model? It's not a problem because it's it's st still so low penetrated. High quality jackets that protect you in 70 below zero weather are, are, are not really penetrated out there. So there's a long room to run. Uh, Canada is going to come out with boots and other products. They're all high quality. Uh, they all have the high, highest quality materials. So uh, I think there's a lot of room to run. How much of it has to become a fashion franchise, though? Well, it's actually. Fashion is a, is a dangerous business, as you well, know. Well, it, it, you know, it's interesting. We, we did one of those uh, uh, heart charts, uh, word charts, and the biggest word describing Canada Goose was, was warm and functional. <laughs> and so the world, the millennials, they want a product that is warm and functional, and, and not, not that it's not fashionable. You can see, uh, I'm, I'm not a great model, but you can see on, a, on, a, on, a, on you, this coat would look incredible. You could model this coat. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Steve, thanks for coming in today. It's really good to see you. It's been great to be here. Yeah, great it's been far you. too long. Come back and see us again. All right, I'll be, I'll be back soon. Could, 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 could I model the coat? <laughs> uh, you're a great announcer. <laughs> you're, you're a great analyst, Joe. It's a demo situation. Is that what it is? No, I don't know. Actually, could all model one of the Becky could. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure.